hours about Jeff and things that I feel, but I, I think that, that that would be tough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce Steve Luke, if they're here, ladies and gentlemen, to come on up. And everybody knows Steve Luke. Have a chat. Thank you very much. Um, I really don't know what to say because this is one of those times. We've been on the road for like three months. It was a very tough decision to actually continue to actually play without, you know, since we lost Jeffrey. And I feel kind of silly standing up here by myself. I think I needed a Mike Picaro up here, man, with me, man. I think David Page is uh, lost as usual. David's got the measles, but he'll be here. You know, but uh, I, we were just really honored to have all of our friends come down here and help out. I mean, it really means an awful lot to us. I'd really like to just take time to introduce to them. Yeah, a lot right. of people travel the long ways. Donald Fagan, please come up and say hi. He came from New York. <laughs> Michael McDonald. He's known Jeff for 20 years. <laughs> Boss Skaggs, please. Don Henry. David Crosby, Eddie Van Halen, and Simon Phillips, come on. Come on. This, really, this tonight is really all about Jeffrey and remembering him and, and all the love and, and the groove that he gave us all. And this is going to be a, a happy event, it's not going to be a wake, you know. We're just going to celebrate and have a great time. And play, everybody's going to play some great tunes. And I uh, hope you all have a good time. If anybody else wants to say anything, it's up to you. But God bless and keep him in your prayers and keep his family in your prayers. I believe this is a Kodak moment. <laughs> okay. Does anybody have any questions? It's just something that we felt we wanted to do. I mean, it, it, to remember him. I mean, this is you know, L.A. is a town we all grew up in, went to high school. I mean, the guys in the band anyway, we've known each other since we were little kids. It's, I mean, the studio musician thing is just a, not only the truth. You know, that sort of happened by accident afterwards. But Jeff, I mean, was everybody in the audience, 90% of the people in the audience knew him really well. So this is really just like a, a get-together, a big party to celebrate and remember him and, and to help his children, you know, so that they set up a fund for them. So when they're 18 years old, you know, they can look back and remember this night and maybe financially help them out a little bit. You know, it's really more of a gesture than it is, you know, trying to make the Picaro family rich or something like that, you know. Steve, did you do the call to get some of your friends together or how did it happen? It was really people kind of volunteered, you know. It wasn't, I mean, yeah, I made a couple of calls, but I think everybody just said, kind of said, yeah. What did, uh, they really didn't have to ask very much. Uh, this is a guy who gave with incredible generosity to everybody. He played with, with everybody here uh, and many other people made half the great records that ever got made. He was very generous with his music. And uh, we just would all like to give him that. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'm here because Jeff played on my first solo album back in 1981, and he played on my last one back three and a half years ago. It's been now. And uh, as everybody has said, he was one of the most generous giving people I ever met. And when he came to a session, he would light up the room with enthusiasm. And he didn't care if the clock was going late, you know, I didn't, he wasn't worried about what, what he was getting paid or any of that kind of stuff. He was there for the music and he was there with everything he had. And he really made you feel comfortable. He made you feel like he cared about the music and not just the job. And uh, he was one of the best drummers in the world. And that's why we're here. Um, I'm going to play, I'm going to do two of the songs that he played on from my records. One is Dirty Laundry. One of your favorites, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and the other one uh, is a song written by my friend Danny Korchmark called You Better Hang Up. And then I'm going to do, uh, we had a big argument about this. The guys wanted me to do Desperado, but I thought 
for the occasion. Uh, an old song from the 40s, I think more appropriate, it's called Come Rain and Come Shine. It's kind of about commitment. So I'm going to do that. Eddie, can you do the same in a sense? What, 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 you know, what you call well, to me, he was definitely one of the best drawers in the world and uh, definitely the groove master. And uh, come on, you, you got to do a tribute to a cat like that. I mean, he was just too heavy, you know? That's why I'm here. And he was a buddy. I'm doing a couple songs uh, that um, I uh, did when I first met, met Jeff from the Soak Degrees album. Uh, we did a song called, we're doing a song called Lido and a song called, called Lowdown, both of which Jeff was uh, instrumental in uh, setting the tone and the groove for, as he has done all of uh, my career since then. Jeff's been a touchstone for me whenever I stuck my head out the door. I usually call Jeff and ask him uh, which way the wind's blowing. And uh, we're all here tonight because of Jeff. And Jeff is here tonight because of us. And we hope it uh, will always remain. So. How much money do you think they'll be raising tomorrow? Huh? How much money do you think they'll be raising? As much as possible. Yeah. <laughs> as much as possible as Ed said. It's really not about the money so much as it is about. I mean, I really don't know. I haven't sat down. This is, like, pretty difficult. I mean, the reality of what's really going on right here is overwhelming. I'm trying to keep it together so I don't lose it in front of all you guys, but he was the best friend I ever had. If it wasn't for him, I'd probably be uh, selling french fries at McDonald's, you know what I mean? I mean, it's really... I, um, taught me everything about music and a lot about life. That's what I'd say. Well, I have some uh, pictures of each of them that are sort of uncompromising. <laughs> and, and it's really, there was really no choice in the matter. Yes. <laughs> hey, Joe. Everybody's doing good. Uh, Jeff's wife and the kids, uh, it's only been four months. They've got a ways to go, but everybody seems to be in pretty good shape considering. And, uh, my mother and father, his mother and father. Uh, it's tough. It's tough for everybody. It's tough for everybody you see standing up here. It's tough for everybody who worked with him. Uh, it's everybody's doing what they can and uh, getting on with it. Uh, what else can you do? How does everybody feel about what's been happening here this evening? Everybody in the family is thrilled about it. I mean, it's a wonderful gesture by everybody. And, and uh, how can you be anything but happy about this? It's a tribute to their son, their brother, being here tonight. It's going to be nice. Are you going to get a play tonight's songs that he played on the recordings of in, a, in that way? Well, for Toto, of course. Uh, for all the artists, I don't know that he played on every song that's being performed here tonight. But What's the criteria for the actual set list? Other than Toto, obviously. And well, uh, the criteria was just that some friends wanted to come down and, and join in and help out in this uh, on this occasion. And and uh, we didn't want to dictate to anybody what kind of songs they might play, so just bring what you want to bring and, and we'll do our best to perform it and, and uh, hopefully everybody will enjoy it. Well, I'm curious to know if uh, Jeff had done any work in the studio with uh, the band or any of the artists on the stage that we might look forward to hearing the songs come out in the future. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, you know, Toto, we cut so many tracks that there's all kinds of tracks sitting on the shelf. Whether we'll rummage through those and do something like that is, uh, I, I have no idea at this point. Uh, but I heard somebody say, yeah. Yeah, I got an album I just finished that he played on. Donald Fagan, um, you recorded with, with Jeff on Katie Live. What was it like? Can you tell us a little bit about your first experience recording with him? Yeah, that was the first album that... Uh, Jeff uh, played on for us, and I think it may have been the first time we actually met. Uh, it may have been one the other time, but um, that was where we finally got to know Jeff. And uh, the thing about him is he was so enthusiastic. He was kind of a lightning rod at, at sessions, and uh, we had heard this guy was playing on the Share Show at the time in the, uh, in the 
pick band for the Share Show, and that he was a great drummer. And some friend of ours brought him over. I can't remember exactly who, but uh, we booked him for the whole album, and I think maybe in the only album we ever did where we, he was such a virtuoso he could play on all the different uh, you know, varieties of, of groups that we were in, interested in. And, um, he was great. He was great. He was a great drummer, and, and his personality came out in his drumming. And uh, for that reason, uh, because he had a very, his style really, you started hearing a lot of imitators, and, uh, but he had that real popping sound that was uh, unmistakably him. You know? It's been said that he's cha he changed the sound. I think uh, Lee Von Helm uh, with the band changed the way people played the drums, and uh, Jeff Picaro did, and it's just a handful of them. Michael Dunn, can you tell us? I'll be doing Taken to the Streets and I Keep Forgetting. Um, Keep forgetting that Jeff played drums on, and uh, uh, like every, you know, I pretty much can only reiterate what everyone has said. I think for Jeff, uh, the common thread for everybody up here is that uh, he brought a lot of magic to all of our lives and careers, and uh, he was a person that you could kind of always tell how things were going on a session by how Jeff was. Uh, he would let you know when. A real thrill for all of us to work with him, be around him. Uh, he was a very loving guy, um, and I think I respect that about him more than anything else, even his drumming. I know he was a brilliant drummer, but uh, he was also kind of a role model as how to be uh, as a person. And the uh, reason I did take it to the streets was the uh, first time I heard Boz's tracks, uh, they were rough mixes, and the reason I heard him was I beelined over to Jeff's house with a track we had cut for the Doobies, which was uh, taken to the streets. And I, I, of all the people I knew, I think he was the first person I ever played it for outside of the Doobie Brothers. And, uh, and at the same time, he played me uh, Boz's stuff. And uh, we just kind of sat around talking about music. But I, you know, from the time I met Jeff to this point, uh, my life really changed. Um, I wouldn't know any of these people standing up here if I hadn't met Jeff Carl, and, uh, and that's as simple as that. And, uh, I'm really proud to be here tonight. Yeah, Rick, right? Can you introduce you to the together? Yeah, I got a call from Jeff. Uh, I was actually uh, just kind of knocking around town. Uh, I had played a Christmas party with Jeff and David Page for casual, you know, and uh, about a year later, I, I got a call from Jeff. Uh, he remembered me, uh, and uh, was it? Uh, I wouldn't have even been in New York City that day if it wasn't for Jeff McCall. No, anyway, uh, he just meant, means a lot to everybody up here. Any other questions? Simon, I'm curious to just get your reflections on Jeff and how it's been working in with the band the last few months. Um, Steve. After well, this. it was a hell of a surprise, and uh, obviously a real honor to be asked to, by Steve to come and play in Jeff's uh, place. Uh, it's uh, quite a seat to fill. Um, I was... Uh, it worked out really well, the, the, the tour. Everybody was really um, uh, kind to me made me feel very at home uh, in a situation you know which which could have been very very awkward um, but they, the guys were wonderful we had a good tour um, and I think I didn't know Jeff that well but every time I did meet him he was ever so sweet to me he was always very warm very friendly and that's how I remember him Ladies and gentlemen, David Page. One more time, give it up for David Page. Uh, that's probably an understatement. Uh, mainly because we were friends, you know, and grew up in high school together. And uh, like I said, I wouldn't know a lot of these people if it wasn't for Jeff also. He was instrumental in me uh, working with uh, Boss Skaggs as well as uh, Steely Dan, you know, and, uh, and it was like, like uh, Donald said, it was mainly his personality was the, was the thing. It was so unique and uh, 
we grew up together, and that's why I formed a band with him because we didn't have to talk to each other. It was it was kind of an easy communication. You know, when you when you do a take on a record, he was usually the first one to get it on the first take, and so I would eventually start redoing my part and fixing it. You know, and uh, but uh, there's definitely in, in, in the having grown up in a time before machines, drum machines, and all this. I think he was had the best time and groove out of any drummer I've ever played with, but Kick had the power of a big band drummer, so uh, he will forever be missed in my uh, musical circles, and, uh, and, uh, but his spirit uh, lives on with uh, the music that he's left all of us, I think. Yeah. So, kind of leader of this whole group, sort of, so to speak, does he move? Uh -huh. Are you sort of like the spokesman or the leader? Shh, not in front of the guys. <laughs> Always. No, there is no. We we're all, it's a democracy. Like like well, once everybody said yes, how difficult was it to put this together and how long did it take? Um, it really was. It's hard to answer. I mean, everybody just said, oh, of course. What and can we, what can we do? Phone well, our managers, our managers, and we made personal phone calls. I mean, there was nothing. It was just kind of like, well, who would be cool? To, I mean, a lot of people really wanted to play, and you know, to accommodate everyone, we we have like a three-day festival or something like that, you know. And we just there were some special people that knew that really knew Jeff as a human being and not just played on their. I thought I kind of answered that earlier. Just he was a buddy, you know. I knew him as a friend more than having worked with him. Yes. Oh uh, well, I don't, I don't know. Uh, they all play, they all play drums. They've got a small drum set at home, these boys. And uh, Miles seems to be showing uh, some some drum technique here lately. Uh, Christopher is uh, is more your 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 lead singer persona, I believe. Uh, I'd be uh, justified in saying that. Uh, and of course, uh, Nico's way too young, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, Jeff wasn't forced into music, even though he grew up in a, in a family of musicians, his parents. Uh, none of us were, were pushed into it, per se. We were all allowed to uh, just, if we showed the interest and showed the motivation to stay with it, we, there was no, uh, no walls put in our way. Uh, I would imagine it would be the same for his boys. So. Thanks very much. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Thank you, folks.
works. I don't know how we have to do that, but I'm hearing feedback all over the fucking place. I don't know if everybody stays long has to come down or whatever. I don't want to have this fight here. A lot of the high frequencies go away when people in front of you because a lot of it's coming right off the chair. Okay, well, I understand that. I just don't, I need to have more headroom on my monitors when I'm hearing out of here. Hey, shit, is that possible without getting any feedback there, buddy? You know, do you want me to go back to the F base and hear that first? That too right now. You want me to do that? I'm going to go back to the F base just for a second. Yeah, so you're not, I'm not getting anything. You're not getting anything here. How's everybody else in general? Uh, it's kind of limited up here, but... Well, I can't hear you, baby. You know, like it's not going to... The monitor, the house is fine, but right here it's like very tight. You mean tight? I mean, no presence. No presence. Sure. Can you add some presence to the background vocal monitors, please? Check, check. Do you want to do like a little... The backgrounds. Okay, Wurlitzer. No, I got that pretty I got nice. Whirly, nice. Wurlitzer right here. Warm yeah, organ. Yeah, okay, well let's get let's let's get Hanley or something, and then Don has to split in a second. But we'll, we can tweak our shit out after everybody else is done. All right, because we have some time. All right, well let's let's get let's get everybody else in whatever order that they care to come out. Yeah, I think Hanley Hanley said he had to. We're only going to do like a little bit of everybody's stuff, so. Is there a bit of a big change to the program that you're using on the organ since uh, since I've heard the band?
bass does sound better here. The low end is not the strong. Can you put a little on, on these songs? 